First resolution is RS 2019-1667. Sponsor is Council Lady Hurt. Encourages the Metro Nashville Police Department and Nashville Fire Department to recruit new officers and employees from local schools and institutions. Council Lady. Thank you very much. <clears throat> In the wake of the fact that our police force is diminishing, I think we've got to do a little bit better in recruiting. They left off a piece of that because I talked about some incentives when they have the new Casey homes that maybe with those who are in college, once they graduate, they can offer them some um, affordable housing or free housing over at Casey Homes in order to make sure that they stay here in Nashville. And we also reach out to our high school students and get them interested and let them know different types of uh, opportunities that's available in our uh, metro government departments. I, I, I committed a cardinal sin. I, we actually need a move. And a, uh, we need a motion and a second so we can have discussion. I'm sorry. All right, so we have the motion and a second. All right, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So that's basically um, the, the impetus of this resolution is to just kind of reach out to our uh, youth. We want to see them do things differently. We've got to invest in them now, so we won't have some of the problems that we are seeing later. What is the latest uh, figures on our police as far as... 138 the, short. 138 short. So that's continuing to rise. Because yep. mm -hmm. it was 108. What about you guys? Well, we actually do pretty well. And, and, and just, if I may, address... Uh, we have a mentoring program the, the fire department does. It's called Blaze. Uh, and we go into the 12 core high schools, uh, and that's exactly what we do. We mentor these high school students to get them interested in whatever path they choose. I mean, we're being there. Uh, we don't have to talk much about the fire department, but right. we do a whole facet with these uh, group of individuals. And then we go out to all the fairs that the, the colleges right. have. Right. So, uh, again, we I think we do a, a decent job at, of that. Uh, again, we're not like our brothers, the PD, at this point in time. We don't have a problem. You know, at recruitment, <laughs> right, right. But uh, and I know they do a good, they do the best they can to PD mm -hmm. as well. But but we do that, and I appreciate you uh, you bringing that up because we're already. Are you seeing much board. success with that? You're seeing much success too. Yes. You know? Well, the measure that success with the blaze is a little different because uh, we just started it a couple of years ago. Gotcha. But the the outpouring of love from the metro schools that we got part partnering with them and the students uh, have been so engaging. We do a lot of uh, uh, we just recently went out to the high school. We do activities as far as scenario based. Texan, uh, distracted right. drivers. We we, uh, we partnered with um, uh, also with uh, some of the local hospitals and brought Life Flight in. So we've got a great program. So to respond to that, I think it's been posit very positive. And we'll see the outpour as the years go on because they're going into college. And then our problem is you got to be 21. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, it's not like we hire every day. So you got a high school student that goes to college and they graduate at 21, they still got to go through the testing process. And then that takes about eight months. And then they're on a list with a potential 800 other people. So it's a, it's a process and it's a, something that has to be done with patience. But we try our best to make sure we're, we're getting out into the communities, especially with the youth, because they're our future. Is that 21 age by charter? I'm sorry. Is it 21 Is it Yes, that's yes, both uh, PD and uh, uh, fire. So I, I, I received I an email from uh, Damien Huggins. And Damien actually used to be with Central, and we worked together in my role with Jump. And, uh, and he gave me quite a few um, efforts that they've made in terms of their collegiate citizens police academy that they've been working with TSU and doing a lot of those things. But the piece that I wanted that mattered the most was the incentivizing of giving them the opportunity to live in some of those homes. That would be something tangible that will give them the incentive to stay and to possibly look at that as a career. And I think that we've got to do a little bit more than just say, we want you to be a police officer, or this is an opportunity for that. So while the resolution is there, I think that 
my request and what is contained in the resolution adds a little bit more meat than just the recruitment side. And if I may uh, speak to that, Councilor, since uh, you referenced Casey Holmes, which is in my district, but it's a little bit of a model, um, because MDHA property is not owned by Metro government, um, it's difficult for Metro, has been difficult for Metro to sort of incentivize housing in that way that you're envisioning, which I think is a good pilot. However, um, in particular with the creation of workforce housing units, which are needed, MDHA has been, is my understanding, yes. reaching out to police, fire, and teachers uh, to sort of build a pipeline for applicants yes. um, to do that. And then I'm excited to see what we can possibly get coordinated now that Mr. Wiltshire is moving over to MDHA to help stream up that a little, even a little bit more. In and the you, you said it best. That I do like the idea of a pipeline. <coughs> and I, I had three brilliant nephews to attend Tennessee State University. And they all left and went somewhere else. Why not keep those people here? I stayed here. I loved Nashville. It was a perfect place for me to raise a family. So I think if we do that with it in mind and try to provide those opportunities for those people, why not? So that what was that was the basis of my resolution. You say you have, uh, it's got more meat to it, but does this bind anybody in any way? I, I notice it doesn't have any kind of fiscal note attached to it. So what you're simply doing is asking and bringing awareness to those issues. Yes. Not necessarily binding. Yes. All right. I yes. Got you. So I'll be clear. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Against? All right. Thank you. Um, okay, board. Is Council Lady Henderson? I know she's here. She's here. She's probably in public works committee. Yeah, if you don't mind, yes. I can, can sign on to it. Well, okay. Never mind. He's going to sign on to it. Because I really don't understand why we have this one, but okay. Uh, I agree with that. I was looking for a little bit more information about. Is it going through the? The school system that's what is how is and the education can, that's being here's encouraged? Here's what I can say out. is that question came up at budget and finance, and she was really kind of taken aback by why it's in there as well. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think her in discussing this at length with with Council Lady Henderson, her desire is to raise awareness about this uh, issue, which she believes to be pretty serious. And one of the main points that she drove home to me was this. Uh, uh, this emerald ash borer epidemic. Um, it's 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 let really me, important. Let me, let me read the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, no, it's okay. We're we gonna we, the bill. Yeah, yeah they are. okay. Um, RS 2019-1669, uh, Henderson and uh, Pulley. Bring awareness to the emerald ash borer epidemic's impending negative impact on Davidson County's native ash trees and urban tree canopy. Uh, do I have a motion? Move. Second. second. All right. So moved and second. I'm sorry. So the only th <laughs> the biggest thing that, that spoke to me about this, and I'm no uh. horticulturist or tree forester or whatever you want to call them, uh, is that uh, uh, for some reason. Uh, this is the last spring that if you have these trees, you can chemically treat the tree uh, as sort of a, mm -hmm. the way we know as a vaccine against this, uh, uh, against this epidemic. Uh, because if you don't get it this spring, then the tree's going to die. That's how serious I understand the epidemic is. Uh, but again, I'm just quoting things uh, that, I, that, was, uh, that were told to me by the experts because I'm certainly not one. If I may, um, Mr. North, uh, are we aware that um, any educational outreach program has been contemplated uh, working with MNPS? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, and, I, and from what I could tell from reading the bill that, 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 it, was, that it was included in an education committee because Metro Schools is one of the departments that the facilities Yes, okay. that, 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 Metro that, Schools is saw, one uh, that is being sent is right. to gotcha. sent the resolution. From That's all that I could see. Because potentially was was on in, in the, the body of some of these trees gotcha. exist. Okay, all right. That makes sense. Yep. And now you're aware. Yep. <laughs> any other conver uh, Any other conversation? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right. I'm just going to very quickly. I know I'm doing this in rules of confirmation. I've introduced, it's going to be a late file bill, it's just asking everybody to calm down. 
just take a deep breath, okay? Because, uh, you know, and I'm, I, Mr. Kendall, I'm not going to speak on your behalf, but I'm going to speak on our behalves. You know, we're going into a very delicate time right now in schools. Uh, testing is starting. A lot of things are starting right now. Uh, then right after that, they're going to be moving into graduation and other things. You know, uh, whatever the board wants to do, the board's going to do. And that's fine. Sure, absolutely. I got to so, yeah, yeah. So all I'm all I'm asking us to do is just send the non-binding resolution and say, everybody, sit back and breathe. You know, let's let's understand what the implications may be, and uh, you know, un there's always unintended consequences. So I'm just trying to. Um, trying to level everybody out a little bit, and uh, so uh, you know, if you can support it, great. If you can't, that's okay too. But uh, you know, because again, it's not telling the board what they have to do; it's making a suggestion. And um, Councilmember Glover, uh, do I understand that uh, that your resolution specifically addresses the matter of uh, Dr. Joseph's licensure? Yeah, yeah it's, it's saying let the, let, 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 that's right, right. That's right. Let the state do their thing. It yeah. basically says right here that the Metropolitan Board of Public Education refrain from rendering any decision regarding Dr. Joseph's employment contract uh, until such time as the State Tennessee Board of Education has concluded its review and consideration of pending suspension recommendations. And it just simply says we just go on record making that request. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to sign on it, but yeah. uh, Ms. Fuller didn't have it when I went back. No, that's okay. We'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you and I spoke yeah. just briefly mm -hmm. about it earlier. Is it included in that that we're also requesting the mayor not to do anything? That because on TV they kept saying, you know, that you're asking the mayor and the board of education. Well, I'm asking everybody to well, back down. But it doesn't say anything. About no, it, because right here, no, what it's dealing with in here specifically is that let the state. The state is the one who's who is the you know uh, levied the actual. Uh, I don't want to call it charges, the allegations, whatever you want to call it. I can totally agree with that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I just didn't want to get in a posture that we're asking the mayor's office to be quiet. Well, it doesn't say anything about the mayor's office. I think it's directed right. at the school board, really. Right, right. Your, what are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are the school board is an elected body. That's who are going to do what they want to do. And we have, and, and as, as a city, it's important that we have faith in that body, as a body, as a group. Uh, to either refrain from or do um, what they have the authority and been elected to do. Um, and that, so, so, um, so does that I, would, I would suggest that. I would suggest oh, that. Oh, yes, I'm doing I would suggest. Well, I just think well, that. I mean, they can, now, now with, with, with all due respect, um, they can pass a resolution to make the council behave, or the legislature behave, or or, well, or, or whatever. Resolution. There, na, na, and um, there, there is uh, uh, issue pending before the board that you're asking them not to do, uh, take action on, right. and say it's not, and and you'll have 30 minutes of discussion about it, um, and say it's not binding. And then uh, it's all over the news that uh, you've directed the school board to not do something. And not doing something, not doing anything, it, you're directing them to do something, which is refrain. Um, and if, if that, if that yeah, you know, it, it's, it's a resolution you can do if you want to, and they can ignore it. Don't take it personally if they ignore it. Um, don't hold it against them come budget time if they if they uh, take use their authority and their discretion uh, to no, to take action one way or the other um, uh, on the matter. Um, no, I hear what that's my that's my I mean that's my. You make good points. Yeah, and, and Mark, I mean, uh, I fully understand it. I mean, I, in fact, the three of us all served on the board together. So I get it. Uh, so it's just bad timing. And and whether we pass this or we don't, bad timing. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Mr.